Good morning. I'm in the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 19 through 26. Now, I'm not going to read the whole scripture part when it talks about rich man, poor man. But I can tell you this. When things are going absolutely the right way for me, it's great. But when it's not, I'm not so nice about it. However, I do pray a lot to ask God Jesus to help me to deal with it better. Now, that's an inward thing for me. My own personal life, my own personal faith, my own personal instruction by the Word of God, from the Word of God, deeply in my heart, is just simply this. I burrow myself deep within my own self into my heart to pray and ask God Jesus for forgiveness of all sin I have committed from this moment past. Then I say this, I pray and ask this all in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. Now that's a preparation for me to die sometime more in the future to be with him more and more and more in my life about who he is as living God, Savior, and Creator alone. But first of all, infinite God. That's me telling myself that I'm going to die more and more spiritually to find myself in my heart so much more that I can be here still as who I am, myself in the flesh, still alive, but dying for him in my heart, mind, soul, and spirit, and my faith growing in who he is as living God, Savior, and Creator all alone. That's not a scary thing for me, but this scripture in particular about a man who was poor and a man who was rich, and they were both alive, and then the poor man died. And in that scripture, God describes what will happen to those who simply resist the absolute entrance into your own heart, mind, soul, and spirit, and allowing your faith to believe in Jesus Christ, our God and Savior alone, who is infinite God first, how has always been and will always be infinite God before he is our God, Savior, and Creator all alone. And we are his children. We are his life. We are his and he is dependence down here for us to be with each other down here in his work. His life has been spent down here with us over 2,000 years ago. And yes, he was God himself in the flesh, man of flesh, God in spirit. So therefore, we are in the absolute incorruptible self-image about who Jesus Christ is as living God, Savior, and Creator alone, who lives and thrives in each and every one of us in our heart, soul, mind, and spirit. Now, that's not in oneness to be with God as in a God figure like or in speech or in capability of being God in God-like nature and nurturing. It is simply this. It is who we are as a child of God, his creation, his sons, his daughters. We are in the image of who he is and was as living God, simply being who he is as God himself, who he was as a man in flesh, but God in spirit. If I'm not here to be incorruptible, who am I? I'm here all by myself, but yet I'm not. Because I can reach out at any moment in time to touch my heart, my mind, my soul, my spirit, and to increase my faith with God's help to reach out to him for him to help me to be a better me. And I want this on a daily basis for me, for myself. But yet, I still want everyone in this world right now to be a better them a better him and a better her. And yes, there are two figures in this world who were created by Almighty God, Creator, Savior, and Redeemer alone, Jesus. He created a man and he created woman. And that is called him and her. And that shall never be changed in the wording of God Almighty's dictionary, who is and which is the Bible. It states in there, man and woman. So don't decrease yourself in front of another person because they want equality in something in this world and not allow you to say he or her, himself, herself. We are here to be individuals, to be an individual of being a woman or a man. That's who God created. It says so in the Bible. If you doubt this, if you don't believe in the word of God, if you don't care about the word of God in your heart, in your life, then you have something to expect in your thoughts sometime in the future when you change perhaps very quickly and suddenly to know Jesus Christ as your God, Savior, and Creator alone. And I pray that you will. Now, am I always this amazed about Christ God Jesus with me all of the time? Yes, I am. But at the same time, I'm here being myself. I can be a better me. And that's what I am striving for. I am striving to be a better me, a better who I am as his child, his daughter, his servant, his creation. I want to be here more with Christ God Jesus like crazy, but I can only do so much with me 
with myself, being a she, going out and delivering some foods for some people in this poverty-stricken nation called America. Yes, it is poverty-stricken because Jesus Christ, our God, the only true living God in this world who has created all things in heaven and all things in earth, has created mankind and woman to be here in prosperity, to be worshiping him as living God, creator, savior, and redeemer alone. But yet we stand still nullifying who he is and saying who we are without God in presence. Take our government, for example. Watch them say something to themselves in private and then despicably repeat something completely different in front of an audience called national TV. If you think they are say, saying something so different behind the scenes than what they are saying in front of the television set with so many people watching, all of America is their audience. But yet still, nothing is accomplished. Do you want to know why? Because not one of them can even say a prayer in Congress before they start a meeting to make a huge decision on whether or not our president now, President Trump, was rightfully chosen or not to be elected for president of the United States of America. We all here in America will never really know because you see the congregational people who are in service for themselves and with, with themselves are hiding within the walls in this congregational setting that sets them in the environment of who they are alone without Christ God Jesus. Now, how do I know this? Because I know that they're not necessarily not saved by Christ God Jesus, but I can tell you this. Some person the other day, and it showed this on TV, nationally, of course, on the news, he said a prayer. And at the end of that prayer, as he read the words, not from his heart, but just from reading the thoughts on this piece of paper, at the end of this prayer, this great, awesome prayer for God alone, he said this, and I ask this in Jesus' name, amen and her. What? He said, amen and her. Because he wanted to kneel down before mankind, before almighty God Jesus, and expect himself for people to say, wow, that was a great greeting and meeting for me being here too, because I'm a he and I'm a she. And he said, amen. And then he said, and her. Well, that doesn't belong in a prayer to, to God Jesus alone. It belongs to him alone. It's supposed to go up to almighty God. So you know what happened? God's telling me to tell you right now. God dismissed that prayer because of what he said. Because when he said that, he knelt down before mankind. And he said, amen and her. Has nothing to do with him or her. It has everything to do with finishing a prayer that God Almighty Jesus gave into his life and his heart to say at that moment in time. And he was not blessed for it. You want to know why again? Because he said, amen and her. He was thinking about men and women over God's beautiful scriptural versed blessing and a prayer. Almighty God Jesus is supposed to go to him alone. Yes, that is our environment in America now, right now, today. It is now 2021, January 7th. A new year to begin and a new crossroads to start saying, which way will you choose? The cross goes in two different directions, up and across. I choose to be with my Christ God, Jesus. It doesn't mean to choose a road up or down or sideways, left or right. It means to say, to stay in the center of your heart where Jesus Christ, our God and Savior is. Don't be aware of who people are around you. Beware of who they are from their heart with Christ God, Jesus or not. That's the awareness you need to keep absolutely certain in your life, in your heart, in your mind, and the way you think. So in this scripture that I just read in Luke chapter 16, verse 19, that goes through 26, Jesus tells the story about the poor man and the rich man. And that's what it's titled in my Bible, the rich man, poor man. It tells a story about a rich man who was so wealthy that he couldn't spend himself for one second or one moment in his time here on this world to say, thank you, God, God, Jesus, for just being with me. And yes, he knows who Jesus is. The poor man begged for the rich man to feed him just a crumb of bread 
from what he had all around him on the table of food. But he didn't. The rich man did not. So the poor man dies. He was ill. He was sick. He dies. And later on, the rich man dies. And there's a great divide between our heavenly God and Savior, Jesus Christ, almighty, infinite God, deity alone, and mankind. But mankind does not believe this. They believe it's all falsification, fictionalized in a book, a storybook called the Bible. Because the proof is in what they say nowadays, which is fun and funny, but not the pudding. But it's not. It's the proof and who what they are trying to prove, and that's God in presence. They're trying to prove who God is. They're not to prove some type of sample of pudding or pie or ingredient in a correctional way of saying that, oh, this cannot be added, but this should be taken out, and then we'll redo it all again and make it even better. That's not what they're trying to do in some food, an article of life, something in clothing. They're trying to change God's word. Now think about this. I'm not kidding when I say that people know who I am. They do not ask me questions about God Almighty Jesus, and I'll tell you why. Because they don't want to know more about who they are as a child of God's and have to put more improvement into their heart, time, and memory and thinking about who they are now and what they were like in the past. Well, I put a lot of my time in the past so I can live through each moment of each day better for the future for myself and with my family around me and all around me right now. I have to do this. I want to be a better me. And that's what the scriptures provide, to be a better me, to be a better you. If we don't scripturalize our talents and our life and our way of doing things in this world, how can we be a better us, a better he and a better she, a better me? You can't be a better you if you don't believe in God and believe that Jesus Christ is God's Savior and Creator all alone. And if you don't put forth that effort to be in the Bible longer, more than just a word or two, or thinking about it, I put myself in the Bible long enough to know that when I'm done reading a statement and a chapter in God's Word, it's enough for me for the day. I praise God and pray, but I still need more accuracy in God's Word. And it's hard to keep up with because it's a lot of legitimate reasoning and want and wanting of wanting to be with Christ God Jesus, but it continues to grow in my life to know and to think that I can't afford to help everybody. I can't afford in time and in my mind and faith to go out and reach everyone in this continent, in this world, in my own neighborhood. But I can reach some. I can reach some people personally one-on-one. -on -one. When I read a book, when I read the Bible, when I'm out with people, I try to get myself into a, a mentioning moment in time to say Christ God Jesus and God bless you and God does exist. It doesn't happen very often right now because of this pandemic. No one really wants to have a discussion about God. They, want, they don't want to have a discussion about Christ Jesus being God. They don't care if you're around them at all. They don't want to get contaminated. So therefore the mask that you have on is very not comfortable. It's embarrassing almost that I have to stand there and talk to someone about Christ God Jesus with a mask, but I can do it and I have done it. Not much, because usually when I'm with someone, I stand far away, take the mask off, and I start talking. But that's rare, 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 rare. I don't do that very much because people are uncomfortable being around me if I don't have a mask. So I just simply do this. I praise God and I pray and I follow him of Christ God Jesus on a daily basis. I wear my mask all the time. I sanitize my hands. I have social distancing going on in my life. And it's not a fun thing to do all of the time. But right now we have to do it. We have to get through it each moment of our life of each and every day until this virus, this pandemic is called off. And there's another virus that God has said to me that will not be as a pandemic, but something very serious if we catch it. It can cost a life or more. That's a touching thing for me. Where are all of these people who have passed away from this moment past? However that is for them and was for them, are they with Christ God Jesus right now? Do they know who he is? Did they know who he was as God alone? Many have said no. Many have said yes. But many more will say no right now than yes. That's saddening to me. Very sad. Because Christ God Jesus is our only way to the true example about who he is as living God's Savior and creature alone. Do I worry about me getting ill and sick and dying sometime in the future? Of course, I think about it moment to moment sometimes or daily. And then sometimes I don't think about it for long periods of time. But I do say to myself, 
I continue to eat as healthy as I can, to exercise, to downsize my weight as appropriately as I can for my size and build. You should do the same. I pray for everybody around me to be absolutely going in for physical checkups on an annual basis when you can have that time. And if the money, if you have it to do so, I pray you will, that you will go in and see a physician to have cholesterol and all kinds of checkups with you to make sure you're healthy. And there's different ways of being healthy in our life besides in our physical body, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And then I usually say physically and then financially. If you want people to know who you are, trust in yourself first, but above all, and most of all, conveniently, always, all of the time, trust in our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is here for each and every one of us. In all of those areas of our life, we need help and we need healing. How is that for you? Do you need emotional trauma healing? Do you need physical healing? Do you need spiritual awareness and healing? Knowing Christ God Jesus as your Savior, God, King alone, Creator, Infinite God, our God Creator, through eternity, all alone He is His God. Do you need something else or someone else to help you with finances? Do you need work? Do you need money? Do you need medical care? Dental care? Pray about it. Ask God Jesus to be in your life right now. Ask Him to be your God, your only living God, because there is no other God to ask. There is no other God to be involved with, to treasure, to know Him personally, one-on-one. -on -one. It's an experience like none other. I can tell you this because I experience Him now on a daily basis. Before, I didn't, but I still believed in Him, and I was saved, but I wasn't like I am right now. I didn't think him, about Him very much. I was involved in my life. I was in youth. I was working. I had a family. If you want to know more about me, I can talk more about me, but I prefer not to, and I'll tell you why. It's about Christ God Jesus who got me through every single day of my life. When I had protrusion of me too much and intrusion of the, of the devil himself calling me things I shouldn't be calling myself, which is a not righteous value about who Jesus Christ is. So we call ourselves names. We call ourselves dumb things because we get upset with who we are, being a child of God. We cannot be perfect. Remember that. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Only God can be perfect. When you make a mistake and you know it's obvious, just simply say this. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry I acted that way. And I've done that so many times. I'm embarrassed to even have to say it again at this moment in time of my life, being the age and who I am as a Christ, God's creation, a daughter, a servant, his child. But I do. I still do. I apologize. Not a lot, but enough. It minimizes who I am in front of people. But at the same time, on a daily basis, as much as I can, I am praising God and asking Him to heal me of my temperament and the things that I might say out loud that's not appropriate. Not anything horribly mean, but just something like, oh, rats. <laughs> something else that might be added like, an, uh, or something like that in front of people that I get frustrated. Not at them, but mad at me and I'm just going off a little bit, being edgy about who I am at that moment in time. Not doing the best that I can and I get upset. Well, it's always natural to want to do that. And so we do it. We just kind of like act through it. And then afterwards we're going, I shouldn't have done that. So remember, just say this. I pray and ask forgiveness for every single sin I have committed from this moment past. I pray and ask that in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. It's not allowed to be inappropriate when you are a child of God. It's not allowed for you to make a mistake. It's not allowed for you to even say anything worse than his beautiful name and love and honor. And then sometime in the future, you say his name in a cursing way by mistake or on, pers pers on purpose. And then you're allowing yourself not to be forgiven by God because he's here right now for you to say this, please God, Jesus, forgive me for that foolishness. I just said and did. I pray and ask forgiveness for that. All of my sins I have committed from this moment past. I pray and ask forgiveness for all of them. And I pray and ask that in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. Amen. And just say, thank you, God, Jesus, and move on with your life. You're going to make mistakes. You are not perfect. God is the only one who can be, always has been perfect. Perfectness is not for me to say to someone, I'm here to tell you about Christ, God, Jesus. Oh, and I'm here to remind you that I'm perfect in everything and, and in wellness in all areas of my life. Well, that's the stupidest thing I could possibly ever say to someone. And to act like it is even worse because I know who I am. I know my past. I know me. And God knows me even better. 
That's the worst part. If I continue on in an awkward way about telling someone I'm so perfect, I'm so blooming with God that I don't make any mistakes. Well, that's just foolishness. And it's not wisdom. It's not wise. It's not from Christ God Jesus. Instead, I pray and ask this. Thank you, Christ God Jesus, for helping me to tell them the truth about me, to make fun of me, to show them who I am, to tell them about the mistakes I have made, to tell them how I have ridiculously said so many things so bad, so wrong in the past, and right now I've healed so much that I don't do it very much anymore, but still sometimes some of it creeps out. I don't like it, but I'm here telling you right now to your face, you can change. With God, Jesus, all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. I told that to a young man yesterday when I was driving through the drive through of a fast food restaurant, grabbing a salad and a drink. And he hasn't seen his son. And he has a cross tattooed on his left arm. And every time I drive through that drive through which is every, every couple of days or so, I see his arm first before I see him and who it is. And I smile at him. I go, hi, hon. Have you seen your son yet? And just the other day, he said, no. I haven't seen my son. I go, how old is he? He goes four. I go, oh, I said, I'm going to pray for you that God's going to give you that opportunity to be with your son soon. And then I said to him, you pray yourself, honey. I said, you pray that God will open that door to whatever's going on in your life with the mother of your son and yourself and the, the situation and the issues causing that whole situation. Pray that God will heal it and open up the door so you can see your son as much as you want. And I say, believe this. Matthew 19, 26, with God, all things are possible. Now he looked at me and he didn't say anything, but he does believe in Christ God, Jesus. And I know because I asked him a few weeks before. So we have a little tiny chat because it has to go faster the drive through lane. And he looked at me and he didn't say anything, but he did praise God. And he did pray later on when he had a chance because he was at work right then. And as soon as I left that restaurant, I was in my car, I pulled over, started to eat my salad, and I prayed for him before I ate my salad. I prayed for him that God would give him that grace and honor in his heart to recognize Christ God Jesus for real, not just through a cross, not just through words in a Bible or a book that he he's read or pictures or hearing church words in a sermon, but to really envelop Christ God Jesus with him because he's true, he's with us until the end of time in this world. Christ God Jesus says that to his disciples and many. I'm here with you. Always until the end of time, which means that on the return of Christ God Jesus in the twinkling of an eye, it will be just that simple and just that quick. The judgment will start and end there in the twinkling of an eye. For those who will be left up behind and all who are in heaven or will be in heaven, we will all bow down before him. Knees shall bow, tongues confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Whatever else is said, I don't know, maybe nothing else. But that's what's going to happen. Every single person, child of God, hims and hers who have been created will confess Jesus Christ as Lord. And we will be on our face, on our knees and bow down before him. Every tongue confess, every, every tongue confess and person say that Jesus Christ is Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, God alone. Remember, we have to know. That when we're here confessing Jesus Christ as living God, Savior, and Creator alone, mean it from your heart the best you can. So that when you are bowing down before Christ God Jesus, when every knee bows and every tongue confesses Jesus Christ is God, living God all alone. And you're doing that now before Him, even when you're walking around, walking, jogging, bicycling, going out and doing whatever you're doing. Having favorment with your family around you, talking and laughing, praying with people, praying for people in a distance or one-on-one. -on -one. It doesn't matter. When you're really reaping in and enjoying the angelic way of knowing that you can be with people that's so absolutely not suffocating, but wonderful and pleasing and delicate and loving and accepting and knowing that when you are out there sometime in the future, feeding a person who is homeless, whether it's food or giving them money or clothing or a need that they have because they have to live outside, know that you're doing it from your heart and it's the joyous the joyous moment that you're going to have is simply saying, I'm giving to you and I'm thrilled about giving you something because I know you need this. I have done this before. I'm doing it now on a monthly basis. It's not a lot of work for me, but it's something I can afford. I can't afford a lot, but I feed enough people and give money out when I see them homeless and on a corner with signs, I hand them some money. Did I always do that? Yes and no. I didn't do it a lot, but I did it some. So now I have increased that because God, Jesus wanted me to. 
So now I have picked one day a month that I will have this food. I'll save my money throughout the month. And then I will go out and buy certain kinds of foods that God wants me to buy. That's all already sealed in their wrap wrappers so they don't have anything that they're eating that they might be allergic to. So they can read what the ingredients are and say, okay, this is safe for me to eat. And then they know they can eat it or give it to someone else if they can't. And maybe trade if they're with someone in a tent. And a lot of them share tents because they can't afford to buy their own. So remember, I'm out there once a month. But when I see someone and I can get close to them in my car or pull over real quick and hand them a $5 bill, I will do that. That hasn't happened for about two or three weeks now. But they're still there. I know where their camp is in the city where I live close to. So I go there and I meet them there one-on-one. -on -one. I pretend they've got a door. Then I go, knock, knock, who's there? Is anybody home? And then we talk and I have pray for them. I will continue to do that. Not necessarily one-on-one -on -one every single time, but they recognize me even only after two times. They know who I am. They know that smile. They hear the voice. They go, yes, we know you have food. That's what they say to themselves. And they greet me in such a polite, pleasant way and always saying, thank you so much. I can't get over the one time, the last time I was out, when this one lady said, thank you so much and have a very Merry Christmas and, and enjoy this weather. Here she is living in a tent. She opens up a part of her tent, staying inside in the cold and the wet. Even though it's sun shining out, it's still muddy and cold. And she wished me a very happy Merry Christmas and to enjoy the weather. It made me cry. And I told her that. And she was really touched by that. So what happened was I went back to my car to get more food bags and I went back to share them with someone and I heard my name called. She goes, Sheila, she was inside her tent. And I go, yes. And she said, are there peanuts in these cookies that you handed out? And I said, I'm not really sure. I didn't wrap them. I mean, I didn't keep them in the wrappers because they were all in one group of in a box. So she said, well, my boyfriend here is allergic to peanuts. I go, then don't eat them. So she said, well, I won't let him eat them. She said, I'll eat them. I go, good. And I gave her an extra bag of goodies. And I said, there's two more cookies like that in that bag. So you enjoy them. And I'll give him the other goodies, which are all individually wrapped and safe for him to eat because he can read the ingredients. So I learned something there. And she was very precious. She wasn't mad. She wasn't angry. She wasn't, wasn't disposing me of anything and saying, oh, this is terrible. She said, thank you. And I said, you're welcome. God bless. I will be back. Some people that I met the time before were not there. A young man, for instance, that's very young, in his early 20s, and reminded me of my youngest son. Made me cry too. But I prayed with him one-on-one, -on -one, as I did most of the people the first time around. The second time around, some were not there. But I can tell you this, the value in my heart to be with those people who are homeless and they say, thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate this. It gives me more heart and desire to want to go out and be with them. Yes, you are saying that it could be a dangerous situation. I go during the day. I am by myself. I pray and ask for God's safety to be around me and surrounding me with comfort and amazing grace and love to give them the opportunity to be prayed for. And I'm out in the open and it's right next to a busy highway. So not much is going to happen. But it could. So I pray and ask God Jesus to keep me safe. And he does every single time. Because he tells me he will. Because I pray and ask him in the name and blood of Jesus Christ. I hear his words back from him through the holiness of who they all are. The Holy Spirit who is God with us all now. And he says, yes, I will keep you safe. Because I want my children fed at this moment in time. And they need, they need this food. It's not much. But still, it's something for them to eat. So I give them money sometimes, but mostly just the food. And when I see people standing out on the street corners, if I have a chance, I will hand them some money. Now it's up to you to choose what your work in this world is going to be. It's more than one thing usually. It could be just your family and yourself trying to survive, like them, for instance. But perhaps they share their food and their clothing and other things with other people who are homeless that they meet and become friends with, actually become friends with, because they are all in the same situation. And yes, they can keep themselves and each other safe as like a small neighboring, you know, personhood, neighborhood to keep them safe so they can say, well, we're here. Let's keep each other safe and watch out for each other. And I really believe that in a larger community of homeless people that that happens. Sometimes not, unfortunately, but it's like any other neighborhood. We have neighbors that keep us safe because we watch out for each other. 
Sometimes it doesn't always work out, unfortunately. It happens all over the United States. Whether or not we are sleeping in a sleeping bag in a tent because we're homeless or in a house, people will break in and want to harm you and steal from you. That's a sad situation because there's such desperation in this world right now. We have to keep people safe. So remember, the rift and the drift is simply huge when you're with, with Christ God Jesus now or not. If there's a rift between you and God now, I don't know if it can get better or will get better after you die. I pray it will now before you die. But if you die and still not accept Jesus Christ as God and Savior alone, he is the only judge to be judging me and to be judging every single child that he created in this world from the beginning of mankind up until the return of God Jesus to say whether or not you are in heaven with him forever. And that's a frightening situation to me still. I still want to make amends with Christ God and Jesus. There's always times I think about thinking, oh, what about that time? And God says, I have forgiven you. The slate is wiped clean. There's one significant moment in my time that things happened and I just thought to myself, that's not good. But still, I have prayed and asked God Jesus for forgiveness of that sin and sins from this moment past. And God says, done. That means I'm here with him so much. I know when he says these things to me. Am I perfect in my life? No. Do I want to be perfect? I can't be. I'm a child of his. I'm his creation, his daughter, his servant. I'm here in a world that has wicked things going on. Satan is here driving people to do mad things, angry things, despicable things, to say despicable things about our God and Savior Jesus. I want people to know I'm here to say the best I can about Christ God Jesus. But if you know him as your Lord, Savior, and Redeemer alone, so can you. So remember, everything that I'm talking about right now in this world, with myself personally, I'm just a part of the community in this world. The whole big old whole world, I'm here as one person in this huge community that's trying to keep safe. Who are those that are helping me to be safe and keeping me safe? And who are those who don't care at all? I don't know. Is it you? Is it me? Let's just say this. If you're watching this YouTube sermon, I'm going to believe that you are going to be safe with Christ God Jesus in your life. Now, the wording of all of these things I've just said has come from great God Jesus and the holiness of who they all are, the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit as God along with us and great God Jehovah. They are wrapped up. They are one in the presence of three. I shouldn't say wrapped up. One in the presence of three. In oneness of who they are in the presence of three by name alone, but still one living, infinite God alone. I'm going to say this. I'm going to not use the sites today to tell you about some of the things I've talked about in the past because I wanted more to say what God, Jesus, wanted me to say from him alone through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. So I will say this. Praise you, God, Jesus, for blessing this sermon and blessing each and every person who says Jesus Christ is living God, Savior, and Creator alone. I pray that this site will be absolutely blessed because... We teach who Christ God is and as well as everyone in this world who teaches who Christ God is as Jesus in a church, in a situation, as a grouping. I pray that we will all be blessed. In the name and blood of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior alone, I pray and ask this. And thank you, Christ God Jesus. I pray that this site is going to be the blessed, the most blessed for me alone because I'm doing it for you alone. The same as, it, with, the same as with every single person who does this, online or off they will also be the most blessed at that moment in time. And even if you're not doing a sermon, you will also be the most blessed because you know who he is. You are blessed by who he is, by his presence in your life. Alone as Christ God, Jesus alone. Infinite God first, our God, Savior, and Creator alone. I claim this all in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. God bless.